Here are two vectors, u and v, and we're given their components. In part A, we're asked to evaluate u dot v, the dot product, scalar product. So since we know the components, we can perform the calculation to find dot product by multiplying corresponding components and then adding the results. So the two x components, 5 and 3, we multiply them, then add. The two y components multiplied, 1, negative 8, and then add. The two z components multiplied, negative 1 and 6. So that's 15. 1 times negative 8 is negative 8. Negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. So we're taking away 14 from 15. The result is 1. So that's the dot product of A, of U and V. Let's move on to part B. Here we're given another two vectors, U and V, or U and W. U must refer to the vector U that we've had in the first part. Vector W, we're told, makes an angle of pi up and 3 with U, and we're told the length of W is root 3. And we've, again, to calculate the dot product of these two vectors. But this time we don't know components. We do know something about length and angle between the two vectors. Now, in your formula sheet, you do get a reminder of how, how we calculate dot product in two cases. This dot product here, when you have components, a1, b1 plus a2, b2 plus a3, b3, that's the method we used in part A. This is the method we're going to use in part B, where to find the dot product of the two vectors u and w, we find the length of u, multiply it by the length of w, and multiply the result by the cosine of the angle between them, which is pi upon 3. Now, do we know the length of u? Well, no, we don't. We're not told it immediately in this question, but we do know the components. So let's have a look at how we would find the magnitude of vector u that has components 5, 1, negative 1. Well, the method for doing that, these two straight lines, vertical lines, mean find the magnitude of, the formula is find the square root of, and we take each component, square it, and add the results. There's your 5 squared, your x component squared, y component squared, z component squared, and we add the results together. So it's the square root of 25 plus 1 plus another one. Remember, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So that's the square root of 27. So we know now, when we're working out this dot product, we can put in root 27 for the magnitude of u. Let's look at the magnitude of w. Well, we're told that's root 3. And the cosine of pi upon 3. Well, that's radians. Remember, pi radians is 180 degrees. A third of 180 is 60 degrees. And we'll get a 60 degree angle in an equilateral triangle. If we chop an equilateral triangle in half, and let's suppose all the sides were side 2, then chopping this side in half, that's length 1. And Pythagoras would tell you that this third side, this dotted line here, is the square root of 2 squared minus 1 squared. That's square root of 3. And there's your 60 degree angle, your pi up in 3 radians. So the cosine, so kator adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's 1 over 2. Cosine of pi upon 3 exact value is 1 over 2. 
So we have to calculate u dot w. We've done that. It still doesn't look very nice, though. Um, let's look at 27 as 9 times 3. Why? Well, 9's a square number. So root of 9 is 3 and root 3. So that's another way of writing root 27 is 3 root 3 times a root 3 times a half. And we know that root 3 times a root 3 is just 3. So we've got 3 times 3 times a half. So these are 9. So it's 9 halves. 9 over 2. And that's the exact value of u dot w. Remember, we're in paper 1, no calculators in sight. So you have to be able to know how to calculate, for instance, the cosine of pi upon 3.